The College Board is a private nonprofit that is arguably the epicenter of the $1.9 trillion higher education industry. There's not a single high school student who hasn't heard of them or has gotten into school without going through the College Board's various services. This week, we investigate exactly how much influence this organization has over the school system, as well as what it actually does for students, teachers, and counselors. The College Board has been criticized for their non-profit title while in 2015 bringing in $77 million in profits and $834 million in assets. The Americans for Educational Testing Reform explain how College Board, along with ETS and ACT, take advantage of American students for financial gain. College Board and the rest of the big three are all classified as non-profits despite making millions every year. This means they're immune to prosecution under antitrust laws and do not have any sort of oversight. They're a monopoly in many ways. I mean, there is the SAT, as, which is theirs, and then there's, there's the PSAT, then there's all the AP classes. So they have a, a, a big um, hand, I guess, in all of those Test, that testing and the requirements to get a kid ready for or into college. College Board has cornered the market um, in some sense and I think that limits our choices. I, I think we're high schools are in a position where we don't have a lot of choice around a lot of these things. We have to offer AP classes mm -hmm. to be competitive, to, to allow our students to be competitive in the college admissions process. We have to offer the PSAT for the same reason. There's no question that the College Board is a monopoly. They're listed as a, a non-for-profit uh, company, but they make large amounts of profits every year, including their, their CEOs and people who are working for the company. Additionally, the College Board works closely with companies like British-owned Pearson Education, Publishing and Assessment Service, which is a for-profit company that in 2003 was personally selected to score all SAT and AP tests across the country. Pearson operates in more than 70 countries, although they generate approximately 60% of all their sales in North America. You know, College Board is heavily tied in with Pearson, which is an educational company, and they've they've had a lot of influence on testing all across the country and it's it's a for-profit corporation and um, it's I don't think it's it's a good idea to tie profits in with education and and the college board and and Pearson sort of feed off of each other so I think it's creating an unhealthy environment because the College Board runs these massively important parts of getting into higher education, requirements for their tests quickly become the requirements for any classroom environment in order to be successful on these tests, therefore in college, while also making your school competitive among other public schools in the area. Their standards are high for what they're expecting you to do in 40 minutes. Um, I don't, I guess I just decide not to teach it that way. I mean, the standards that they have are good standards for writing. The way that they measure whether a kid can do that or not in a timed situation I think is wrong. Because I have kids that I know who could write a really great essay if they had much more time. And they won't be able to do it in 40 minutes. And, and to me that is inherently unfair. Um, it's a little bit different for math here, but I know that there are some schools that are a little bit more on board for following the, um, the test as a, as a Blueprint. While some colleges are moving towards not accepting SAT scores or weighing them less, college applicants will still most likely still take the SAT or an AP exam through the College Board. The privatization of the higher education industry is massively increasing in America and you should be paying close attention to how it is affecting your academic career and your school systems.